Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, bear with me. I have an idea and um, I want to run with it. <laughs> so for Halloween, I wanted to do a miniature scene. <laughs> Scarecrow and pumpkins and the like. Anyway, in my last video, what I made was a bunch of pumpkins and some pots out of air dry clay. And I will be using some of those pumpkins in this display. So the idea, <laughs> if I can get it to work, is to have something cute that I can put on my desk or, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so bear with me, please. <laughs> I, I'm going on the fly here. I have no huge plan. I just have an idea in my head and I probably should draw it out, but it's not how I work. So um, I have a few things here that I wanted to use. I have a light. Uh, I bought a, I think it's a 10 pack or a 12 pack. Anyway, it comes with a remote. You can use these individually if you want to. You just put it in there, that kind of thing. So this um, I got from AliExpress. Perfect. I love these. Uh, I use them in my dollhouses now and uh, I thought it'd be kind of cute for this. I was going to use the Christmas lights from Dollar Tree, but the battery pack is too big for this container. If I had a larger container, it'd probably work better, but I don't have one. Um, now, in the end, it might not work anyway the way I have it planned, because I still want to cover this up, so I don't know. So, we might not even end up using the battery pack, or this uh, light for that matter, unfortunately. Mm. Now that I think about it, because I have other plans for this. So, this is a con the icing container from the... Um, cinnamon rolls that you get at the grocery store so I figure I'd use it I like it because it's kind of frosted so when you put the light under it you can see through it so I thought it'd be kind of cute to light up the um, scarecrow kind of thing from below I don't know if this is gonna work but I thought it'd be cute to try and if it doesn't work it's okay we'll try something else so I don't know this is paper from um, gift bag handles that I just take off and I unroll them. I thought we could use it either as the scarecrow body or something. I don't know. I also have some coffee dyed um, cheesecloth. We could use that. I still haven't decided. <laughs> uh, I'm just, like I said, I don't plan these things ahead, unfortunately. Mm. I just sort of, you know, go with the flow. It's called Create a Frenzy for a Reason, people. Okay? Because this is how I operate. Okay? Alright. So let's get started on that. So this we'll just set aside for now. I refilled my glue. And we'll see how that goes. I don't know. So I hope you're all doing well. My last video, like I said, it was... Uh, well, I'm doing the pumpkin, so I don't know how well it's all going to show up. <laughs> because I do have um, a bunch of different projects on the go at one time. Right, let's toss some of those out. Um, this is not really going to be inside the pumpkin patch necessarily, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Yeah, so my last video... Uh, or group of videos, I suppose, was all about, um, you know, making pumpkins out of air-dry clay, which I think they're going to look really cute. So I thought, you know, while I'm drying those, I was going to make something to put the base together on. Now, once I paint this, it might not show up as well as I had hoped. I don't know. But that's okay, because this is where the Christmas lights, I could wrap it around the outside edge. So that's always another option, which might actually end up being that. You can go smaller with these if you really wanted to. I kind of like the, um, the large-ish size. They look more like stone and stuff like that, so... I did enjoy having these on the stone cottage. I also did a... A courtyard with this which really turned out well which I'm very happy with so again you know it's because I do these things on the fly I don't really plan ahead 
as you can see I'm not really prepping anything sometimes you just have to go for it you know if you overthink things it can make it more um, difficult to get started because <laughs> then I'll just never leave the planning phase <laughs> which really would drive me crazy I'm just using Aileen's tacky glue this stuff pretty much holds just about anything once you get it going so there is a slight dip to this but that's okay we're gonna be filling it up with um, a pseudo plaster kind of thing that I've used in other projects which I really am glad I found a recipe for it's just paint and baking soda so you know this stuff it's not just for cleaning and baking <laughs> So that's kind of the nice thing about it. So, so I don't know if I'm going to make a traditional uh, kind of scarecrow. I'm not entirely sure. We shall see. It's just a, basically a puzzle you're putting together at this point. And this, you know, the preliminary stuff is always boring, but it always fascinates me when it takes shape, you know, and it's, I always find it so cool to have this idea in my head and then to see it come alive is amazing. To me, anyway. I, I found sometimes, you know, with the planning stage, I can get too bogged up in the details. And I think sometimes that prevents me from even starting a project, which, you know, which is why I do it this way without true planning. Just an idea and then going from there. And I think for me anyway, that is the key to creativity. It's not really having a plan, just experimenting, really. That's basically what I'm doing and just having fun. You know, when you were a kid and you were putting things together, you know, you didn't really plan ahead. You just built. That's it, you know. You just went for it. I did anyway. Now, there are some people out there who have to plan everything ahead of time. And that's okay if that's how you work best and go for it. So I sort of wanted to make sort of a, like a platform, obviously. So let's say this is, you know, like at a pumpkin patch or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Then, you know, this would be kind of a display of all the Pumpkins and apples and stuff like that. I thought it'd be kind of cool. You don't have to be too particular about your pieces. You know, just slap them on there. There are two sides to the um, egg carton. One's a little bit rougher than the other side. So it's kind of nice to experiment to see what texture you would like. And just to change it up a little bit. Oops. So this is plastic. So I don't know how well this is all going to stick. But this glue actually holds pretty good in just about anything. So. That's one thing I do like about the Aliens Tacky Glue. Oh, it does slide around a bit, so you just have to be a little bit mindful of that. It does look kind of cool on the inside. <laughs> oh. So what have I been doing lately? So pumpkins, obviously, because of, you know, the season. Um, I created the... Um, greenhouse what else did I make I made a minute well not a it's a greenhouse cabinet or maybe a potting bench in a cabinet 
that was kind of cool. Which I also used the um, um, the pumpkins in. I think that's what started it. You could put less stones on here. You don't have to do all of these. It's entirely up to you. If you didn't have a lid, you could use a tuna can. That would work. Uh, it might be a little bit sturdier. <laughs> and you don't have to use stone. You could do brick. You could do just a paint effect or something like that. That'd be cool, too. Um, when's the last time I... Oh, I made bricks for the uh, stone cottage. Oh, my goodness. Mm, not my favorite thing. That is very, very tedious. It's... Um, yeah, it's not easy. I have a huge amount of respect for people who can do that and, uh, you know, not throw their project through the window <laughs> because they get frustrated. So there is that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was not my favorite part of it. It turned out well, don't get me wrong, but it was a bit of a nightmare. So... So it probably would work best if you were to let these dry nicely and then we can do our little finish over top. Had I thought to do this ahead of time, I would have, but we'll work on something in the meantime while this is drying. Let's see, oh, it still smells like icing, it's kind of funny. And it's been through the dishwasher, which is weird, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind the smell of anything, but it's odd. Now, had I thought ahead of time again, you know, I could have sanded this piece first and then glued all this on. That might have worked a little bit better, but I don't mind experimenting this way. Hmm. Well, let's do a big piece. You could hot glue gun this on there too. Use hot glue. That works just as well, I'm sure. It might actually dry a lot quicker. Again, you know, not thinking. All right, that's okay. Let that um, sit for a bit. All right. It doesn't look pretty now, but it will eventually. It's got to get worse before it gets better. So we'll set that aside. There we go. I have a basket full of all kinds of bits and pieces. Same as all the wood pieces. I just save it all because you never know what you're going to make with it. Um, Actually, I can show you one thing I made with it, with all the little end pieces. I just, you know, used a uh, bottle cap, and then I just glued it around the edges. So you can paint that, and then you can put a plant in it. So that's kind of cool. I don't know, or a couple of pumpkins kind of thing. We might use this later. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Alrighty. Let's see. So we got that part. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll let that dry. And then we will figure out the rest. I'll grab the tool kit. Uh, let's see. Drill. I don't think that's going to be big enough. I need to get a better hand drill with the capacity for a larger drill bit. But it's okay. Could just use my Dremel. Oops, that's not good. I'll just open that up. Obviously you need to tighten these a little bit more. There's no chucks so you have to kind of figure it out as you go. That's a very tiny hole. We can get the all. Let's see. I 
I don't want to split the log, so I want to make sure it'll be okay. Could get my Dremel out. I might do that later, but for now, I think that'll be okay. Because we're going to end up using a skewer. Something with a point. Come on. No. Do I have any pieces in here? I mean, toothpick would work. I don't know if I want to make... Oh, I could make the scarecrow that tiny. For the display one. So you could use a Q-tip. A Q-tip. <laughs> toothpick. That's the word I'm looking for. I'll be okay. What can I say? Yeah, that works. We can work with that. It doesn't have to be a large scarecrow, right? It just needs to be a certain size, and I think that would work quite well. Now you could use um, actual branches if you wanted to. Um, but I don't have any on hand. Like sticks and stuff like that. Had I thought ahead of time, again, you know, that's probably what I would have done. But we are using toothpicks. Hmm. Well, what? Let's see. It'd be easier if I use the point. You know what? I don't have any pieces in here. I have the point. Oh, it's too short. Okay. I'll just grab another one. Not a big deal. Good old skewer to the rescue. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay, so we just need to figure out the length. And I use my tin snips to cut most of the wood that I have. So I don't really bother with <laughs> um, other tools. I will be ordering different tools. It's just, this is what I have on hand right now. How tall do I want my scarecrow to be? Uh, okay, we'll go for that. So in the end, it'll be about four inches long for this piece here. And then I will use cross piece. I have a bunch of these. We'll keep the longer one long. Now I find one. Oh, sugar pies. All right, that's okay. I'll use crying over spilled milk. Okay, this is not a uh, skewer. This is a wooden dowel. So we're not going to worry about that one. And that might be long enough. Do I want it longer? No, I think we'll just use this. And we're going to go a little bit crooked, I think. I think we need some string. We could use twine. Hold on a second. Or if you don't have twine, I do obviously have twine, but if you don't and you still have burlap, you could just take one of the uh, strings from that. But I'd have plenty of twine. Look at this. I have no idea where it came from. You can buy it at the dollar store, you know, you know, on a roll, but there we go. So I sort of want it to look friendly, scary. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. All right. So instead of trying to wrestle with it, I'm just going to tie a knot in this one first. Ah, come on. There we go. All right. Now it's not going to get away on me. And then what we're going to do is we are going to cross it over and then just tie a nice tight knot. This would look probably pretty cool if you had um, 
like twigs and stuff, it would look a little bit more scary if you if that was the look you were going for. I did look up some pictures of scarecrows. Um, unfortunately, I've never made one myself. I have one that I bought a long time ago. I don't put it out very often because the dog used to bark at it because <laughs> it would freak him out, which was funny, actually. Um, but I just thought it'd be kind of cute to have a mini one in the house, if nowhere else in my office. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's see. We have burlap. Not burlap. Well, we do have burlap, but we've got this coffee dyed um, cheesecloth. Excuse the noise. Let's smooth this aside. So one of the pumpkins, I did make a bigger hole in the bottom. So once that dries, I'll probably use that for the head. I thought it'd be kind of cute. Um, the paint a face on it and stuff like that. Actually, let's grab that while I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, so this is the one that I'm going to use. I think proportionally, it's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tall scarecrow. Let's put it that way. I could still move it down a bit. Ooh, yes, I can. All right, let's do that. So we're a little bit more into proportion. So take about an inch off, I guess. And then when I go to put that on, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to put a face in this because it'll be easier to paint over the face that I'm going to attach. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. While it is still pliable, um, I need to make the eyes... tools here. All right. Where is that? There. Let's use the skewer, shall we? There we go. A couple of eyes. <laughs> A little nose. And then we'll give it a mouth. squish it so it opens up a bit. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, there. Scared cute, right? I think so. I'm going to use this one. There we go. Don't push too hard or else you're going to end up cracking it because don't forget it's been drying for a little bit now. There we go. There. I think we'll just set that aside. <laughs> we don't need it at this point yet. So that'll be perfect. Alrighty. Sometimes when you do these fill like you know videos in a row, you kind of get ideas for the next one, which is kind of cool. Alright, uh, let's see. Now this is paper which we could use as the body. Now, it is very, very white. I have some coffee uh, spray here. If not coffee, then ink will do. I just want to make sure it doesn't look too plain. You could do any color you want, obviously. I just want mine to look a little bit more natural, if that's even a possibility. <laughs> All right, we are going to put a hole in there somewhere. A 
basically. No idea what I'm doing, people. All right. Oh yeah, kind of like that. Squeeze that together. Err. Stay. And grab some more of this twine. That's too short. gonna be a pirate one. <laughs> Definitely puffy Victorian sleeves. That's okay. There we go. And you could trim some of this off, obviously. Uh, where's the other arm? There we go. Let's color some of that too, shall we? I probably should have done that ahead of time, but you know, this is how I roll. I'm going to puff that up a little bit. This is going to be a girl scarecrow, I think. sorts, I suppose. Alrighty. Let's give her a jacket, shall we? Or some kind of cape. Ooh. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Because once the pumpkin head's on there. Ah, uh, yeah. Alright. Let's cut some of that. You don't have to be too particular. It's all about the idea of it, not so much the um, technical part. And don't forget we can trim that once we uh, put that on there. Okay. So once the pumpkin head is on, don't forget we're going to paint it, all right? So like this. Ooh, she's got a very long neck. Well, we can move that up. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we don't want her to have too long a neck. All right, so it's gonna be like that, right? And don't forget, she's gonna have her little stem up there. And then we're going to make like a little cape kind of thing. That, like that. And then we'll trim this all off. Oh, that looked really cool. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Okay, let's set our scarecrow aside because that needs to dry. And then we can paint that. So we're going to put this aside. This is pretty good. This is how we're going to attach it to our base. This is more or less dry. We'll see. It should be able to uh, get paint on it now. So we'll do that next step. So I'm very happy about this. We're going to set it aside. And let that be for now. Let's put that away. Oh, we're getting a bunch of things done here. Okay, let's see if this is still any good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, oh, perfect. So this is just basically paint. In this case, white and uh, baking soda. So I just have a little spoon in there and then I put like four or five spoonfuls, depending how thick you want it. So, and then you go from there. So it looks nice and thick. So that's about the consistency. So you can still spread it with a paintbrush and then we're gonna cover the whole thing up with that. Alrighty. This is a paintbrush that I've already used for this. So it's a little bit um, wonky and destroyed. That's okay, because it's going to get even more destroyed, unfortunately. That's okay. 
So we want to start off with a dry, more or less dry paintbrush. So you want to sort of have a destroyed paintbrush, but not overly because you don't want it to be too wide. So smaller is better in this case. And all we're going to do is glue it on. So what I like about this, so it acts like a mortar and also um, stone once you apply a couple of layers. So you can fill in these little gaps, which works really well. Be generous. And you will want to let this dry overnight, if at all possible, before you do anything else. You could put a few coats on and um, let it sit. But it's, it's not quite the consistency of toothpaste. It's a little bit thinner than that. But the stonework does come out quite cool. you don't want to see any of these um, little air pockets because I didn't glue down the whole piece right so that'll you know get all covered up by the next time you go around and do another layer oh, there we go loop it on And because it's acrylic, it's easy to clean up. It's not like plaster of Paris or anything like that where it becomes too difficult to clean. Now you could use sand, I suppose, if you wanted extra texture. I don't know how well the uh, paint would hold it onto like a, a side surface like that instead of horizontal. Ooh, there we go. I just want to make sure that I cover up all the bits and pieces. So when you dab like this, it just creates a better um, texture. For the first time around, the second time around, you might want to smooth over a little bit um, just to get less texture so that you're, you know, you're getting in between, but not so much so that it looks too much like um, you glooped it on, even though that's what we're doing. Don't you love the technical term, glooped? left in here. Can't see anything. <laughs> so I did this on, um, excuse me, this is paper, but now it looks like stone, right? Once I paint it, it'll look even more like um, a cement uh, potting plant, planter. So, but at this point, it's just about covering it all up. So when you let it dry in between the coats, ish, it works a little bit easier just to sort of place them down a bit. So when you go to paint the stones themselves, it'd be a really neat effect. I want to. Now, because I didn't think ahead of time, remember, about the uh, the lighting situation, because that's kind of what I liked about the um, the plastic of this, because it was frosted, you wouldn't see the lights too clearly, it'd be more diffused. Now, obviously, we're covering up the whole thing, so it might be a little bit more difficult to uh, have the lighting, but it's okay. We can put lights on the outside. It's not the end of the world. 
And if you were using a tuna can, you wouldn't be able to use the light on the inside anyway, so. There's that. The miniatures don't have to be in boxes and, you know, we can do them any which way we want. You don't even have to do a room. You can just do it. So now I'm just filling up these little gaps, basically cementing them together a bit. So this makes it a little bit easier to see the um, stones, right? So I'm collecting it basically on my paintbrush. So again, this is going to take a little while to dry. Oh, I've got a hair on there. want to vary your brush strokes a little bit just to add a little bit more interest oh don't drop it at this point if I were to drop it it wouldn't be a disaster but it would not be pretty let's put it that way I'm trying to keep pressure on it. Just fill up those gaps. I mean some of it can be covered up with other paint so it's not the end of the world. Just gonna get most of it. Alright, now we need something to dry it on. Here we go. Alright. I will put that in there. Now we're going to let all that dry. Beauty of this, it cleans up with the baby wipe. And then that is it for today. On this project, anyway. We'll see how far we get once everything dries. And we'll come back to this later. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're creating along with me. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what the scarecrow looks like afterwards. I think it'll be fun. So yeah. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, or for this video anyway. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.